my sincere apologies from that from this side because of some technical difficulties the session had ended abruptly now we will continue with our topic that was prehistorical age now in prehistory we have seen that no written records are available so written records are very important for decoding history written records are very important for decoding history so how how do we know about the history of this period because we know all of this because of the archaeological remains if you see there is a very famous movie called as the mummy and the millennial kids and the 90s kids they must be they must be knowing about this movie so the hero and heroine of that movie are include involved in archaeology so these people very carefully they study the remains and buildings of the historical times and from this we get to know many things like the technique that they were using the materials that they were using and from the materials we get to know about the rom from which part of the country they have sourced their materials now let us move forward that the archaeological remains include stone tools pottery artifacts and metal implements basically the different difficult thing about this aspect is that if the material is not long long lasting it is lost because of decomposition and basically in the fertile valleys of ganga and yamuna because of the moist soil the these materials get rust and decomposed very quickly and that is why not much much of material is available in the gangetic plain no to move forward we will see that in india prehistoric period is divided into paleolithic mesolithic and neolithic paleolithic and the metal age however these periods were not uniform throughout the indian subcontinent this means that during at some at some place historical phase has started very late and people were still practicing hunting and gathering way of life for example at present times in the island of andaman and nicobar there's a very famous tribe called as north sentinel islands north sentinel island and the tribe is called as sentinelese this tribe still follows the hunting gathering way of life <laughs> so sorry and how do, and how do we know about the age of this historical phase, prehistorical phase like for example a particular rock structure is from 5000 years or 4000 years we get to know this from radiocarbon dating in radiocarbon dating they use radioactive isotope of carbon radio active isotope of carbon that is c14 and the, another method of another method of determining the age of artifacts is dendrochronology in this dendrochronology rings after every year after each year new rings are formed in the bark of the tree and this and this method to calculate age is called as dendrochronology counting the rings in the counting the rings of the tree like this this is the section of a tree bark and very small 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 rings are present in this this shows the map of prehistorical india in the sandit tributaries in the jhelum chinab ravi vyas and satluj next we have seen ganga ganga and yamuna then brahmaputra is ganga we have seen above right now we will see about paleolithic or old stone age paleolithic or old stone age 
Now, old stone age sites are widely found in various parts of the Indian subcontinent. This means that the sites of Paleolithic, the Paleolithic sites are found in different places in Indian subcontinent. And they are generally located near water source. Several rock shelters and caves used by Paleolithic people are scattered across the continent. So these people used rock shelters and caves for living. They rarely lived in huts made of leaves. Actually, during Paleolithic phase, man was very hard put against nature. He had to survive consistently by fighting nature. For, for food, he had to consistently look for avenues of food, such as animals and plants. And actually, Paleolithic corresponds to the earlier, older phase of human history that is called as Pleistocene, Pleistocene age. Pleistocene age. Sorry. Pleistocene age. It roughly corresponds to 2 million to 10,000 years. We see before present 10,000 years before present several this we've seen some famous sites are given here such as Sohan Valley and Potwar Plateau these sites are located in Pakistan Shivali Hills on North India Bimbetka this is a very important site Bimbetka Bimbetka is in MP it is a world heritage site This, these caves were dis discovered by V. S. Vakankar. V. S. Vakankar. And during Paleolithic, there was discovery of fire. During the Paleolithic age, discovery of fire. Discovery of fire. And one of the most important thing regarding Paleolithic is that there's a British officer called as Robert Bruce Foote. He's called as father of prehistoric archaeology. Robert Bruce Foote. Father of prehistoric archaeology. Next, what we have, Adamgarh Hill in Narmada Valley. In Old Stone Age, food was obtained by hunting animals and gathering edible plants and tubers. This means that these people hunted other animals for food and they ate what could be eaten through the nature by gathering roots and stems of other plants. Therefore, these people are called as hunter gatherers, hunting gathering way of life. Presently, example, present example, we can see sentinel stripe. Present example, sentinel tribe, sentinelies. Sentinelies. They use stone tools, hand sized and flaked off large pebbles for hunting animals. Stone implements are made up of hard rock called as quartzite. So the type of rock they used making tools is called as quartzite. This is a type of a hard rock. And mostly they also used pebbles. Pebbles. Pebbles mean a rock shape of this size. Pebble is a circular, little circular rock material. And we have no idea about their language and communication. And one more important thing is that they have depicted their way of life in the paintings, old Stone Age paintings. Their life became modified with the passage of time since they made attempts to domesticate animals. This is natural because 
with period of time with their experience they started some changes in their way of life and this led to development of new things that we will see in, later in the mesolithic period one more important thing that this text does not contain is that paleolithic is divided into three phases three phases first phase is called as upper paleolithic upper paleolithic the upper paleolithic runs from 5 lakh bc to 50000 bc and in this phase there was use of hand axe and chopper that is core tools core tools this means that tools were made from the major part of the stone for example this is the stone the and stones tools were made up by chipping this part and the out, outcome was like this same here in this diagram we, we can see here hand axe and chopper now these materials were used for cutting trees or uh, cutting and uh, chopping animals and hunting now the major drawback of this technology is that since heavy tools heavy stones were used it was very difficult for to hunt animals and you have to go at a very close range to hunt animals so this becomes difficult next we have seen we can see is that middle paleolithic in middle paleolithic there is a little change from the early upper paleolithic this phase corresponds to 50000 to 40000 bc now in this phase what the changes were is that flakes technology flakes industry flake tools now we have seen that this we have seen that core parts now flake tools is what does flake tool mean is that this is the large part of the stone and chipping this is the small part so now weapon was made by using this small part but flake this core flake tools now in this phase there was small small tools such as blades and burins burin example burin burin is a tool like a screw driver like a screw driver and scrapers so new types of tools were developed in the middle paleolithic in the last nd exam a question was asked relating to paleolithic tools a question was asked re relating to paleolithic tool uh, paleolithic tools the question that was asked is that level wise technique level wise technique of making tools in this technique what the people did was is that this tool was made up by chipping this material from upper part also and the final product looks like this so this looks like a turtle that is why it is also called as turtle technique turtle technique next we will see is that upper paleolithic upper paleolithic now upper paleolithic is the last phase of the paleolithic and paleolithic age now in this phase there was a new type of stone that was used that is flake uh, flint industries flint this last this is also the last phase of ice age 
relative warming has uh, now been started. Then we can see is that new flint industry, flint tools. Flint is a type of material, a type of stone that is called as. So the materials made out of this tool, tool is called as, this stone is called as flint tools in industries. And also evolution of homo, homo sapiens happened during this period. Evolution of homo sapiens. Before our current form, our, our ancestors, they had a long history of evolution and development. For example, in the beginning, it is generally believed that humans are evolved from the primate-like private primate-like organism. So after many years of development and many years of evolution, this started to this changed to how we look now. So it's generally the order of development is called as the first hominids hominids or human like first is australopithecus after australopithecus there was development of hand using uh, hand using man that was homo habilius homo habilius after homo habilius we have homo erectus Homo erectus means a man that could walk straight with a straight spine. And before Homo erectus, the Homo habilis man used to lean forward and walk like on the quadruped. Quadruped means walking on four limbs. Walking on four limbs. Next, next we have is Homo sapiens. And after that, we have Homo sapiens sapiens. Now let us move forward. Middle or mid, Mesolithic or Middle Stone Age. Now this is the next stage of development in our history, in human history. In this phase, the period roughly corresponds to 10,000 BC till 6,000 BC. It was a transitional phase. This is important because some practices from Paleolithic Age continued and some new practices had also started which would which were to define the next thousands of years of human history mesolithic remains are found in langnaj in gujarat and adamgarh in mp and also in some places in rajasthan paintings and engravings found at rock shelters give us an idea about the past social life so how do we know about these people from their paintings and engravings means something which has been carved on rock material or any uh, stone walls and also some people also used animal tooth as decorative item in the neck or through ivory that has been carved in sites of mesolithic age a different type of stone tool is found now the tool making technique has had undergone a change these are tiny stone artifacts, often so very small stone tools they started making. That was 5 to 8 centimeter in size. They are called as microliths. We're called as microliths. Micro means small and lith means stone. The hunting gathering pattern of life continued. So the older thing that continued is that hunting and gathering. And the new thing that they learned is animal husbandry. And also and fishing, animal husbandry and fishing. There was, there was also a shift from hunting big animals to hunting small animals. Since this was more, this was a safe off, a safe option. You, and microliths means three to five centimeter in size. So micro, after using microliths, they could, this is a microlith of small, small centimeter. They could make arrowheads and use it for killing animals from a long range. and domestication of animals and primitive cultivation started. Agriculture was not com started completely. Only a very primitive type, not very developed type of agriculture was started. And in the, this phase, the most important thing is that burials of the dead. 
one second sorry the practice of burial of the dead had started in this phase burial of the dead means people started believing in life after death belief in belief in life after death neolithic age the next thing we can see is that neolithic age a remarkable progress is noticed in human civilization in the neolithic age neolithic age is also called as neolithic revolution this name has been given by a historian called as v gordon child this is a british historian he told termed the neolithic age as neolithic revolution it is approximately dated from 6000 to 4000 bc and neolithic remains are found in various parts of india actually in kashmir it is called as kashmir neolithic the famous sites in kashmir, kashmir are kashmir valley are burza hom and gufkral burza hom and gufkral and chiran in bihar belan valley in up the most important neolithic sites are in india in south india are maski brahmagiri allur and kodikan this site was asked in the previous nd attempt because it was related to the mauryan empire now the chief the very important characteristic of neolithic phase is that there was uh, beginning of agriculture agriculture means proper cultivation using techniques and proper planning of sowing harvesting and threshing so in this period there was beginning of agriculture and because of agriculture surplus surplus means whatever the grains that was required people started producing more than that amount so in this phase the occupation was agriculture and domestication of animals and polishing of stone tools now in this phase polished stone tools were used that means that this line means that the tools were polished to give them a very sharp sharp cutting edge and the manufacture of pottery the manufacture of pottery started because using for storing the extra grains they needed something safe they needed some safe material but the during that time metal was not discovered so the only thing that they could access is rocks or mud but rock is a very heavy material so they maybe they must have thought that after seeing the moist clay and putting some shape in that 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 shape gets formed and hardens after some time so they must have started using pottery after observing this phenomena and after this for manufacture of pottery you need a wheel a wheel is turned this type of wheel is turned by the potter and a pot is shaped while giving it by holding the mud like this and the potter makes the pot so for making pottery wheel was necessary so this period also saw the development development of wheel and cultivation of plants and animals now for cultivating plants and animals people needed to settle in one place because if you sow and come back after one year you will see that the crop has been destroyed by animals or any other any other uh, competitor so people needed to stay at one place to protect their crops and their food this led to the exchange of views people started uh, living at one place this le led initially to the development of a very small village and after many years of living together people started community life community life means is, what community life means is that they started dividing functions among themselves for example prehistoric cave art shows that the women are busy in preparing food and men are generally busy with arrows and javelin in the prehistoric cave art and generally in the prehistoric art humans are shown using geometrical figures like this and women are and there there are also evidences of community dance so there was division of functions maybe there people started 
now the hunters were different and cultivators were different so maybe this led to specialization of occupations now let us move forward community life led to sedentary life sedentary life means a settled life settled life at one place and because of settled life people could exchange ideas among themselves and after dividing the functions they could progress at a rapid pace so agriculture neolithic period is also called as neolithic revolution and in that in this period they observed the property of mud that mud hardens after some time so after observing this property these people started making mud bricks now this that's a flaw in this in these bricks the flaw is that they were not very well baked so they couldn't they were not very long lasting instead of grass huts wheels were used to make pottery pottery was used for cooking and as well as storage of food grains so pottery is also was also used for storage of food grains and cooking large urns were used as coffin so in this period for the burial of the dead elaborate practices had started elaborate practices had started people started placing the dead in uh, urns urns mean a container like a pot so that other rats and other animals do not destroy the body and also paying respect to the dead they also put some grave goods maybe they believed in life after death so that the people at some places the feet of the death are cut so that they do not roam here and there after becoming ghosts so this shows that people believed in life after death domestication of sheep goats and cattle was widely prevalent the crops cultivated by these people are wheat barley rice millet now most important thing is that neolithic age also saw the beginning of cotton cultivation and cloths so the roti kapda makan everything was available in neolithic period and one of the most important thing is that earliest evidence of cotton is found in mehergarh mehergarh is a place now in pakistan earliest evidence of cotton and also there's a place in uh, up called as koldihwa this place has shown the earliest evidence of rice so the longest phase of human history we have now studied the longest phase of human history in a very short amount of time till we will continue our lecture tomorrow till then take care and have a good day